Good morning, everybody. I'm going to try once again to do a short video. I don't seem to have much luck at short. I can't seem to shut up long enough, I guess. Anyway, what I'm just going to show you, of course, is what's growing in the house, since nothing is growing anywhere else here. In my last video, I bragged about our lack of snow. It had all melted well. Two days ago, took care of that situation. We got another seven or eight inches, so everything is white outdoors again. I want to give you a little look at uh, the hydroponics, the arrow garden, the artichoke, and a couple of uh, tender things that I bring in the house for for winter. So, uh, uh, doing quite well in front of my large glass doors in the living room. So I will get out of the way here and uh, show you some of these things. A good friend of mine who's an herbalist and a fantastic gardener uh, moved from Maine uh, to New Hampshire and had to downsize with a, a lot of her possessions and I was lucky to receive several of them. I love this particular book. Uh, it's just called The Gardening Encyclopedia, published in 1936. Just uh, goes to show, I guess, that everything doesn't have to be Googled and on the internet. Anything you want to mention is in there. Uh, just a few paragraphs on each item, but very good basic information on growing these things and how to plant them. I have it open to O's. One of the, I'm going to be showing you two of the O's in this particular video. I have an oleander, which I probably can't read that, I imagine. With the, uh, well, probably still can't read it, but anyway. There's a section here on oleander, which is a not really tropical, but uh, warm climate shrub that uh, I grow in a large pot and bring it in for the winter. And then the other section here is on onions, which if you've watched one of my previous videos, I think a couple of videos back, I uh, started them from seed in flats here in the, in the light garden. And uh, they are up and growing. They, actually, they came up, uh, I think, in five days. Today is the sixth or seventh day, but in five days they were starting to germinate. But anyway, the other thing that I want to show you right here in this same location, my... Uh, nutrients for the uh, uh, hydroponics arrived and I have uh, given them their first feed of nutrients. I'm using what uh, Gary of Gary, Gary's Garden uh, used because he had such great luck with it. It's a three-in-one system, three different types of solutions and you, you put uh, according to a chart that comes along with it. You put uh, certain amount and it gets increased every week and whatever as it grows. Anyway, flora micro, flora grow, and flora bloom. And uh, there were no, a numerous charts came with it. This is the one that I'm using. It seemed to be closest to, to what uh, I'm doing anyway. I was amazed at how small amount you put in to begin with. Uh, per gallon, and the container is, I think, a five gallon container, but it's only got four gallons, U.S. gallons of water in it due to where the holes were drilled for the hoses. You can't go any more than that, but uh, one milliliter of the flora grow, two milliliters of the flora micro, and one milliliter of the flora bloom, and that's per gallon. And Gary said that he went uh, a little on the light side, so I did the same thing. I didn't put quite that amount in. Anyway, I'll show you what's what's growing in the in the hydroponics here. It's, the, everything's basically as it looked. I think the last time they just got their nutrients yesterday, but all the all six plants are up and growing and growing their second set of leaves. That's the anyway. curly mustard. Just I guess you can see where it's just starting to get its second set of leaves. Next to it is the sage, and that's uh, now up to four of the true leaves. Uh, next to that is the chard, and it was the last thing planted, so it's just really just got its seed leaves at this point. That is supposed to be oak leaf lettuce, but the so far the two true leaves that have come on it don't look anything like oak lettuce, oak leaf lettuce to me, but maybe that will develop later on. And this is parsley, which is now getting its true leaves. And the thing over here that well, I guess I can see the top of it this time. That's summer savory. For some reason, tall and spindly. And as you might notice, there's one coming here, and that's coming up out of the uh, clay pebbles 
clay balls, whatever they're called, that you use. Uh, I must have dropped a seed down in there when I was seeding the, the uh, rock wool cubes. So I've left that alone. It's come up out of the, the depths there. Well, I've taken the dome off of one of these flats just to show you the onions germinating coming up. And I don't know how many actually show. There are some that are still quite small, but there's almost 100%. I would say this in the low 90% at least so far has germinated in this flat, so I may not have to reseed too many. I'll put the dome, like on this one, I'll put the dome back on and leave it for another week or so. And if there are some cells that nothing comes up in, I'll reseed them. But as I said, those started coming up within five days. And I think today is a week since I planted them. Well, once again, the problem here is too much light, but I want to show you how well these things are growing. I'm quite impressed with them all of a sudden. They're really starting to take off in the arrow garden. Uh, the dill, as you can see, is a fair-sized little bush here now. I'll be cutting these two larger fronds probably later today to add to a potato salad or something because I don't want them to continue to growing right up into the lights and I still don't want to raise the lights but the basil is like almost watch the thing grow Gary Gary said that I would need to start planning to make pesto or something soon but it isn't quite that large yet but it is it's growing very rapidly and the thyme plant is, is doing quite nicely I like thyme I can hardly wait till that's large enough to use some branches of it. But anyway, that's the arrow garden which is doing very well. I guess that gives you a look at the snow through the garden door there. I guess they call these things or patio door, whatever you want to call it. These are a few things that uh, are far too tender to leave out here. That's a bay laurel, uh, bay leaf plant that I've had for a few years now but last summer I kept it in the I guess I didn't keep it in the hoop post I was going to say I did I kept it outside but we had such a nice hot warm summer that it did a lot of growing last year so I have used some of the leaves off of it and I'll probably use a few more to prune it back so it become bushier next to it here there there's a little better light this time the Hard. There's so much light in the room, but it's backlit, it's hard to uh, show what I want to show here. That's a couple of rosemary cuttings that I rooted. I have a rosemary that I left in the hoop hose. I don't know if that'll make it through the winter or not. I kind of doubt it, but I took some cuttings off of it and, and rooted them so I'd have something to put out there come spring. And this poor little thing is a Meyer lemon. Uh, I bought it sometime late fall. It's lost three or four leaves. As you can see, it's got some blossoms on the lower end of it there now. I don't see any sign of new leaves coming on it yet. Uh, I'm just pleased it had, didn't lose all of its leaves, so at least it's still alive. I hope to uh, be able to bring that through the, the uh, winter and maybe put it out in the garden in the summertime. And this monster is in a very large pot. That's the oleander that I've been talking about. It was a rooted cutting that some neighbors gave me. And now, I don't know, well, pot and all, it's over five feet tall, I guess. I'll take you in and give you a close-up of the blossom. That's the blossom buds, and it has seven or eight trusses of them. Very fragrant when it blooms, and, and pink blossoms. I had one years ago. Uh, got too large, I guess, and they just disposed of it. I couldn't bring it, keep bringing it back in the house. But uh, it had these on it in the garden last summer. And what happened is what you see here. These They just sort of turned brown, dried up. I don't know. But these are looking healthier, like these ones might actually open. So I may get, uh, I may get some blooms out of it in the house this winter goes out in the garden this year it's going to have to be pruned back severely because if I don't it's going to be far too big to bring in next fall but I will show you some if they ever bloom now I'll take you down to the dungeon and show you the uh, artichoke which is doing very well That's the artichoke with its grow light aimed on it as I've said before it's not really an unheated basement but I keep the thermostat down here set on five degrees 
trying to discourage this thing from really taking off but where there was one stem one plant last year when I cut this down they've kept coming up from the roots and I count six right now six stems coming up so what will happen as to how many artichokes I'll get or not I don't know but it's doing great in the basement in the winter anyway and this lamp seems to really be helping and I have to keep turning it around or it leans over as you can see there towards the lamp but I'll give you an idea of the size of it my arm down in there it's a nice healthy plant I try not to overwater it again because I'm trying to discourage it from going sky high in here but that concludes this little look around at the things growing in the house thank you very much for watching